Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Just wanted to go through some of the overnight models really quick and uh, show you what's happening as far as the longer term is concerned. It's a pretty, in pretty interesting pattern that's evolving here. And first off, a little look at the GFS and, and, and you can see what's going on. By the end of the week, we've got um, a, the trough here that moves through a series of little vortexes that form up in Canada. But you've got a ridge, this strong ridge out in the Pacific that's going to try and build up across Alaska. And at the same time, you also have this upper high that's building up across Greenland. And there's a tendency, and you can kind of see it right here uh, as we go into the periods from day five to day seven, that these upper highs are really kind of trying to connect across the poles. And what this does is that it basically forces the vortex further south, and then you create um, a flow uh, that displaces cold air from the poles southward. I mean, it's not a perfect displacement, nor is it ever a perfect displacement. It's always going to be changing in terms of, you know, the actual shape and the orientation of, of the jet stream itself. But the bottom line is that it, it's a shift to colder temperatures um, further south uh, on uh, not just the GFS model, but on all the models. And some of them are more aggressive than others. Just want to uh, switch over to the European and you know the devil's going to be in the details in all of this the european really just develops this huge blocking high uh just southeast of uh, greenland that it's building northward i mean this is really a a, a super block here that forms uh, and when we uh show you on the european here so you got this upper high here you've got this big upper high here so basically the vortex is displaced southward into central Canada so you know your your flow I'll do it in a different color so you can you can see it better uh, so the flow is basically like that that brings down cold air further south of normal and when we take a look at um, the temperature profile here in terms of above and below normal you can see it pretty well how uh, how much above normal it is uh, all across the polar regions I mean all of this Oh, maybe blue's not the right color because it matches. Sorry about that. But, you know, here's the, the area of a big above normal. So there's your upper highs just like that. And here's your area of below normal uh, in, in uh, central Canada. And, of course, you know, you're waiting for the transition to complete along the East Coast. But, you know, basically the cold air flows like that. So, you know, we're going to see how this all eventually winds up and, you can, you can you know there's a lot going on and you got a lot of um a, a, whenever you got these blocking patterns like this they, they obviously can be dangerous in terms of storm development they can be dangerous in other ways uh too because we don't really know the extent of the magnitude of the cold air and how it plays out now here in the gfs as we go past day 10 from last night you can see there's a pretty good stretch of below normal temperatures that lasts for about five or six days and then you wait for another weather front to come through of some sort, but it's still below normal across much of Canada, still above normal across much of the poles. So, you know, this is going to be uh, a, an interesting couple of weeks ahead in terms of how it all plays. Now, with regards to specifics, I would, again, caution um, anything uh, with regards to specifics because we know that it's all going to change in, in one way or another. I mean, the GFS model does have a couple of chances along the way for some snow. I mean, we, this is our first system uh, for Tuesday. Uh, here's one for Thursday. Now, the Europeans got a little bit more of a developed low. The GFS looks like it's coming around to the Europeans' idea of developing a low on this front, which the European has been doing for several days now. And then it does get pretty cold uh, Friday into Saturday before the next weather system and cold front approaches. And then that comes through, and then we have to sort of wait for a more important development. But even here, too, uh, yesterday, uh, the GFS was developing a pretty big storm going into the Great Lakes. It's kind of backed off on that idea now. So um, the specifics here are difficult. And beyond day seven, then you start to get into some uh, some pretty decent, a uh, pretty strong shot of cold air that moves up in the plains and Midwest, and we've got the arctic front with a wave on it so again the devil will be in the details down the road there's another chance around january 8th or 9th if you want to believe it and then it's bringing another arctic front across the top 
you know, there's going to be a lot of variation with this, you know, supposed blocking pattern. If it develops the way it, it is shown, I think we're going to see, um, you know, colder than colder air take over and then a gradual um, ch uh, uh, increasing in the number of chances for snow in the northeast. Across the west, by the way, as you look, uh, kind of calms down a little bit. You've got some weak systems and I'll just back it up uh, to the beginning here so you can take a look. You know, the blizzard pulls out, of course, and you've got uh, just, you know, bay high pressure and weak systems coming in uh, to the northwest and eventually settle down further south. Uh, but, you know, there's no big storm that comes out of this, at least on this particular run sequence. But it is going to be cold right through the period uh, as uh, you start to get that uh, flow out of Canada really taking strong control. So um, we're going to see what today's weather models bring as we start uh, out the new week. And, uh, of course, uh, check out my latest posts on meteorologistjoechoppy.com, weatherlongisland.com, nycweathernow.com, and download my app. It's free. You can subscribe to local forecasts for New York, New Jersey, Long Island, Pennsylvania, uh, Connecticut, and the Hudson Valley for just a buck a month. And um, I appreciate you guys being here on YouTube. As always, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's absolutely free. Helps me grow my subscription base, and Google likes me better. So um, it would be great if you would just hit the subscribe button. doesn't cost you a dime. Have a great day.